Hey you guys, welcome back. Now at the beginning of one of my previous videos, you saw a 3D printer. Now that printer was the Creality CR10. That printer is actually a very good printer right out of the box with no modifications required. And you can normally find it on sale for around $400. And in today's 3D printer market, for what you're getting, that is an absolute steal. Now can you find a much better printer than this? Of course, but in my opinion, not in this price range. So even though this is an amazing printer right out of the box, there are some things I'd like to improve, such as stability. And that involves adding sections of 2020 extrusion added to the top of the printer and extending down to the bottom. This will essentially form a box-like structure that will make it virtually impossible for the vertical Z-axis extrusion to bend or wobble during printing. And that's what we're gonna be tackling today. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is some measuring. Measure once, cut twice, right? Wait. No, that's backwards. So for the first measurement, it looks like we're right at 269.5 millimeters. Now we're not going to the very end of the printer because there's going to be another section of extrusion that will extend down on both sides. So the first two sections will be cut at 269.5 millimeters and will butt up against the two sections extending down. I also measured the distance from the top extrusion to the bottom and measured 551 millimeters exactly, taking into account the thickness of the very top section that extends from one side to the other. Now I know the sections of extrusion I purchased are silver and the machine is black anodized, but the black anodized extrusion was $50 more, so yeah. I'm not paying an extra 50 bucks just for the color. If I don't like how it looks in the future, I'll just take it apart and paint it flat black. All right, so now that we have our first two measurements, we need to take one more measurement. And I'm getting 319 millimeters exactly. Okay, so now that we have our measurements, let's get cutting. Now what I'm going to do is cut them slightly longer than I need using the table saw. Once that's finished, I'll use the milling machine to bring them to the exact lengths. Now I'm making good use of my DRO here, so I'll be putting the sections I just cut into the vise. Then I'll use an edge finder to find the very end of each section. And now I know that my machine is set to the very end of the extrusion. And once I've found the end, I'll move the table over to the correct length, plus a little more. Drop the tool down and start chipping away until my DRO reads the proper measurements. And I'll repeat this process for each section until I have all five sections cut to length. Now for assembly, I'm going to be using a combination of these corner brackets that are really meant for things like wooden shelves or desks and some extrusion fittings that slide into the extrusion that rotate 90 degrees when you tighten down the bolts. It's a clever little piece of hardware. Now I've sped up the assembly process here as the video would more than likely be way too long in real time. And here's the finished product. And it came out better than I expected. Now these sections of extrusion really help with the rigidity of the entire machine. Now, like I said in the beginning, this is a great machine right out of the box, but this bracing will help to keep the machine stable when printing something very tall. Now, most of the really tall prints that I've seen online that have been printed with this machine without the bracing have looked just fine. So if you do have this printer or you're contemplating purchasing this printer, please don't think that this bracing is absolutely necessary. All right, guys, that's going to wrap this up for now. In the next video, we'll be installing the new dual Z-axis lead screws with some custom 3D printed parts. We'll see you next time.